Hey guys, it's going to be a little bit different of a video today. It's going to be a vlog challenge. Dun dun dun. Um, basically, Kat and myself and Alia have been all challenging each other on YouTube and Twitter to do like video challenges and I challenged Kat to do a video all in one take which was hilarious because she kept on like cursing and being like mm, Caitlin every time she would mess up and would have normally edited out so um, that was awesome and um, made us kind of continue this whole thing and Alia, 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 um, <laughs> she did a, like, a four, but kind of technically five language video, um, which was awesome. I am super impressed with that. And so anyways, it's a lot of fun, and um, this is my first challenge from Kat, which is to kind of um, go through some phrases that I've learned from the Japanese uh, dramas that I've been watching throughout the years. And um, this should be a fun video, so I'm gonna kind of jump into that. But also, um, while I was like going back through the dramas that I've watched, I kind of wanted to do some mini reviews on them too, to kind of, if you're interested in Japanese dramas and would like to watch some, um, first of all, let me know because that is an awesome common interest that we share and we can become friends. And uh, number two, this would be a great video to watch if you are looking for some recommendations for great uh, dramas to watch. So uh, first I'll get started with the phrases, Japanese phrases that I know um, by heart. I know some other like uh, Japanese words and stuff, like I can hear it and understand it, but I can't like say it. But this is stuff I know like just because I'm a human and love Japan. So I can introduce myself. Hajime mashite, watashi wa keiturin desu. Yoroshiku That would be uh, nice to meet you. I am Caitlin. Um, please be kind to me. Uh, yeah, that kind of weird translation thing. Um, I can do greetings for morning, afternoon, night, and say good night. So, ohayou gozaimasu, konnichiwa, konbanwa, oyosumi nesai. Um, when you are living with other people, and you come home, you say, Tadaima! When you come over the threshold, and it's like, I'm home! And then somebody would say, Oh crap. <laughs> I should have written these down. <laughs> um, Tadaima! Crap! I forgot that one, but I'll probably watch this later and be like, Duh! Um, but then, when you're leaving the house, you you say, Itekimas, I'm leaving, and somebody will say, Itarashai, have a great day. Um, and also, before you have a meal, you say, Itarakimas, and that means thanks to everything that went into this meal. Like, um, if you're eating meat, thanks to the animals that gave up their life for this meal. You're thanking the cook that prepared the meal, um, you know, just kind of uh, like a bon appetit, kind of, itadakimasu, that's what you say. And then after you meal, you would say, gochisousama desu, I think. <laughs> that means uh, another thank you, that was yummy. And yummy would be oishi, um, sugoi is amazing, kawaii is cute. Um, I also know um, some like other Japanese words from like Lolita fashion or ghetto fashion, um, which is probably 
not that interesting. Um, let's see. I know Chotomate, wait a minute, just from lots of Japanese dramas. They're like, ah, Chotomate, ah, kudasai, please, please wait. <laughs> I didn't understand you, or um, please wait up, you're going too fast, or like kind of excuse me, like what, wait a second. Um, along the same lines, like, gomenasai, I'm sorry, gomen, um, kudasai, please, sumimasen, excuse me, um, arigato, arigato gozaimasu, thank you. Uh, there's always different levels of everything that you would say in Japan, like, it depends on who you're saying it to, are they older than you, younger than you, are you related to them, um, is it a stranger, is it your boss, you know, like, there's always going to be different um, endings and varies, variations on the words, depending on who you're talking to, and the level of politeness and all of that jazz, so. Um, and then, just from J-dramas in general, I know, like, family names, like, Otosan would be dad, Okasan would be mom, um, Onechan, older sister, Anichan, older brother, and the kind of suffixes. I I can't talk today. Um, like that they tack on to the end of somebody's name when they're talking to them to um, you know give a level of respect or kind of. Um, a familiarity, so, um, if you say Sama, then that is, like, kind of royalty, like, you would say, like, for a princess or something. San would be for, like, your boss or somebody that's older or higher up or more respected than you. Chan would be somebody that's beneath you, or a child, or, you know, somebody that's younger than you, and kun would be for, um, a little boy, or a female student, if you're a teacher and you're saying, you, you could use, um, for both genders, kun. And so those are, uh, just, that's just the tip of the iceberg on the Japanese phrases I know. Um, like I said before, like, if we were watching a Japanese drama together, I could probably, like, um, understand a lot of the stuff, but I just can't, like, off the top of my head spit it out. So, uh, and I'm the same way with, um, Spanish, too. Like, um, if somebody is talking at me in Spanish, I will, I'm right there with you. I've got it 100%. But if it's my turn to talk, and I'm just, like, Mmm, pantalones, mm, gato, <laughs> you know, I just, like, completely suck at it. So, I think a lot of, um, that people learn that way where you can, um, hear it but not necessarily reciprocate. So, um, but an interesting thing, like, um, Miyazaki's movies, like, Spirited Away, Totoro, um, uh, Princess Mononoke, um, those kind of movies. I recently watched Totoro, and I could understand everything they said. I didn't need to look at the subtitles, which was amazing. I mean, that's a kid's movie, and um, a very, very basic stuff. But to be able to watch a two-hour-long movie and completely understand what's going on. I mean, I've seen it before and everything, but okay, bear with me. I I can't talk today. I I just can't process two languages in my brain, I guess. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is I thought it was cool that I could understand the phrases and everything from that movie. Blah. So, um, now I'm going to go over the Japanese dramas that I've watched and, um, about, um, 
I want to say like four years ago I started getting into Japanese dramas and um, I watched a couple of them and then I found a website called My Soju which is unfortunately freaking not a site anymore. It's like down. I don't know why. Um, which is kind of ruining everything about my life. Um, but they had this awesome like 200 long list of all of the Japanese dramas that are on their site and so I just put that into a spreadsheet in my Google Drive and I started watching <laughs> all of all of the dramas um, alphabetically and I didn't get past the A's <laughs> but I've watched a couple of them out of order and stuff but so, anyways, I, I need to um, get back on that because I, I still have like like maybe 400 more Japanese dramas to watch and now I know that Korean dramas are awesome too. I should definitely get into that. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to start with um, One Liter of Tears, which is the first one alphabetically. And I'm going to have a rating system for each of these, um, like, out of five stars. Five stars would be a really, really good um, drama that I would recommend to anyone. I would watch it again, maybe cry, blah, 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 blah. Four would be just a bit down from that, um, like, I would still recommend it, it was still amazing, but just... For whatever reason, it's just not, you know, perfection. Um, a three would be... <sighs> I'd probably still say you should watch it because meh. But either it was, like, outdated or I just didn't love it. So I liked it, but I didn't love it. A two would mean I, like, didn't even finish it. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it just you know, kind of was like, bleh. One would be all of the um, dramas that are were on the site, that is, the site is no more, but they were on the site, but they were incomplete, like, um, I couldn't even watch them because the video player wasn't working, or they didn't have all of the seasons, so I can't recommend it because I haven't watched it, and so it just automatically gets a one. Um, anyways, so, um, I'm a little bit distracted right now because I don't know how long, um, I will be able to keep talking. I don't know when my tablet will shut off because I've already talked for 13 minutes. This is probably going to be a two-part video or, yeah. So I'm just going to keep talking until there's no more blinking red light. Um, so number one is One Liter of Tears. This gets five stars because it is one of my favorites. Um, they call it One Liter of Tears because you will cry One Liter of Tears. Um, literally just like, ah, my emotions. Um, it's about this... Um, girl in high school, she's very young, and her body is slowly shutting down from a very rare disease that the doctors really don't know that much about, and they can't really prevent um, anything. So it starts out really small with her kind of like, you know, tripping a little bit and kind of falling down, and it just gradually progresses to like just her limbs and everything just shutting down and not working anymore and now she's in a wheelchair and now she's confined to a bed and oh my gosh and she just I really really like that character because she just has this um you know that never give up attitude um gambate do your best that's another one I know um ah crap 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 can you see me oh this is where I would edit things out. Cat! Um, anyways, she has this um, spirit where she just, you know, never gives up and 
is just a little firecracker, and even though she's like, doesn't know how long she has to live, whatever, she is just remarkable, blah, blah, blah. Um, I learned a lot about Japanese hospitals from watching this um, show. The fact that their hospital doors, like, slide this way, you know, instead of, like, opening a door like this. Kind of like the shoji screens um, in the old kind of traditional houses. Um, and this is probably where it's cemented in my brain that um, you call your mom Okasan in Japanese because she is like crying out for her mom, Okasan, Okasan, and it's like really emotional and. Ah. Um, the next one would be 101st marriage proposal. I would give this a three. Um, it was about an unattractive guy proposing to um, 99 different ladies over his um, like career with speed dating and everything. And um, he he's like a really good guy, but I think it's just because um, of his age and he's not like, he doesn't have a lot of good qualities on the outside, it, it appears. So, um, so a lot, not a lot of people were willing to give him a chance, and he falls in love with this really, really beautiful Japanese woman who has like long, flowing hair and um, plays a cello in an orchestra, and she's like really accomplished and beautiful and everything. And she um, doesn't really give him a chance at first, and romance ensues. You can probably guess what happens. Um, but anyways. Um, I give this a three because it's kind of annoying just the way that her character like doesn't give him a chance until like the very end, you know? Like, come on. He's not that bad looking. I mean, I guess maybe I'm more tolerant of people. Like, I can realize that people have a lot more going on inside than they do on the outside. But, um... Anyways, and this was like really outdated and kind of 90s, and I usually, if if the picture's like grainy and the clothes are crappy and weird, it's really distracting for me, so I usually just tend to not give those um, dramas a chance, but... Uh, next one would be 14 Sai no Ha Ha. Uh, haha means mother, so that would make this title meaning 14-year-old mother. Um, I wonder what that's about. Um, basically, um, it's kind of slow at first, but this 14-year-old um, girl gets pregnant, and she has to kind of decide if she's going to drop out of school, um, what her family's going to think, are they going to be supportive, all of those things. Um, it got better towards the end, but I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this one. Um, and I learned Akachan means baby. <laughs> um, Alright, here is a really good one. A Sleeping Forest. I give this five. Because there is a really, really, really hot guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. The, the main guy in this one, like... It might even be worth watching the first episode just to see what I'm talking about and like fangirling about. But he is so beautiful. He like always wears these wife beater tank tops and has long, beautiful hair. And he is just so gorgeous. And um, he stalks this girl for like 10 years because they were like childhood buddies. And then she moves away. And. Um, I don't know, for some reason, like, unrequited love and, like, almost to the point of, like, stalkerish is kind of attractive for me, which is weird, um, I know, but, um, I just thought his character and everything that he went through was really, really, um, awesome. I was just like, 
<laughs> like staring at him the entire time. Um, so basically there was this um, murder mystery that she was involved with and um, her whole family was killed and she was the only one that survived. And so the whole point of the story is for her to kind of look back on those memories and figure out what happened. And he's kind of trying to help her. And, um, yeah, there's a really big twist at the end. So I would recommend that one. Go watch that one. Um, the next one is Abarenbo Mama, which means Childish Mom. Um, I'd give this one a two. I didn't even finish it. Um, I just thought, ugh, it didn't really hold my interest. I'm not going to even talk about it. Let's move on. Absolute Boyfriend, otherwise known as Zetai Kureshi, or Robot Boyfriend, would be, that's a, I give that a five. Um, the, the main character girl, she, like, um, doesn't ever think she's going to get a boyfriend, so she kind of signs up to get a robot boyfriend, and he arrives in a box, and he, like, you know, kind of, like, comes out of the box, and he's really cute, and she's like, <gasps> and then he kind of follows her around at, at work, and romance and chaos ensue. Um, this was, like, really kind of more lighthearted and um, cute rather than, oh my gosh, I want to kill myself because of these emotions. Um, and he always saves her, and he's really, like, a sweet guy. Um, I... They say, Daijoubu desu ka? A lot, uh, which means, are you okay? Daijoubu, I'm okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I thought it was cute. And there's like a love triangle and stuff. And, oh yeah, and then she's really into baking and trying to be like a sweet um, chef. And they have these like cream puffs that look so, so good on the drama, but... Um, I can never, like, find one that actually tastes good, but I will always have that image of, of like, a really, really nice-looking, um, cream puff that just is so unattainable, unattainable for me to get at, like, my regular, you know, grocery store or whatever. Um, alright, here's a really good one. Aishitaru. Aishitaru means I love you. Um, I would give this a five. Thumbs up. This was such an interesting Japanese drama. I really recommend it. Um, basically, a little boy murders another little boy. Uh, what? Um, this was just, like, super fascinating because, um, it really looks at the family dynamics and how just even one tiny um, action can really have like a snowball effect and manifest in really negative ways. So, um, just like kind of a lot of factors went into this like explosive event, but um, kind of like a neglectful father that doesn't really play catchy ball um, with his son, coupled with the fact that. Um, the mom is a little, like, paranoid about her parenting skills, and one day um, the boy comes home and he's all wet, and instead of asking him, like, how are you, or, like, what's wrong, like, why are you all wet, that's kind of weird, why did you, like, skip school and why are you late, um, just kind of finding out, like, what's wrong with him, um, he, she scolded him and kind of, like, roughly dried him off with a towel and sent him to his room without any food and right when that was like a moment when he was really scared and needed her the most and so from then on he kind of like shut her out um anyways i don't want to tell you the whole plot but um uh, basically it's it's kind of like makes me paranoid because if I'm ever a parent and I have like a bad day and I kind of snap at one of my kids, um, that could be one of the um, leading causes of that kid doing something 
bad that will really screw up his life and the life of another person. So, um, anyways, um, learned about, like, um, how Buddhism is integrated into Japanese, um, life and death and afterlife and, um, cemeteries and shrines and, um, kind of the whole rituals around death and families and what goes on with all of that. Um, we're almost done. I'm sorry if this is boring. Um, I really liked Hanakimi. That's, uh, I would give that a five. Um, this girl goes undercover as a boy at school and, um, I like the whole gender bender kind of, um, storyline that, that's appealing to me. Um, and another unrequited love kind of storyline with, um, Ikita Toma, which is another really hot guy. Um, this is the first Japanese drama I watched with him, and he is really, really good. And I just thought it was so beautiful that his character, like, falls in love with this girl who's uh, pretending to be a boy, and he is a straight guy, and so now he's, like, questioning his, um, his own sexual preferences, but then he gets over it and he's like, fine, you know, I guess I'm gay because I love you, and then he finds out that she's actually a girl, and then he's like, well, that's fine, I still love you, and, but, ah, can somebody talk to me about this because I, I am having an emotional crisis even though I've watched this like three years ago, but I just, I just, oh man, that amount of like acceptance and love and just no matter what, I'll still love you no matter what gender you are, if you lied to me, whatever, it doesn't matter, oh man, that gets me every time. <laughs> Um, Hanayori Dongo was Boys Over Flowers, um, that gets a four in my book. I, that was the first Japanese drama I watched, but I find it to be overrated, and, um, there's like a love triangle, eh, I don't really remember it, that was like four years ago, so, um, I'm sure there's a lot of good qualities, but I'm just not rem remembering them right now. And lastly, Bara no Nai Hanaya, um, I probably butchered that. I would give that a five because um, that's another one of my favorites. This guy owns a flower shop with his daughter and this blind lady comes in and he kind of, um, she kind of turns everything upside down and kind of uncovers some things about his life and... Mm, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Anyways, um, gosh, the father character was so kind to everyone and so selfless, even though he was being kind of taken advantage of by some people. And just his connection to um, everyone was just so special and giving and just like a really a good model for how a person should be not to mention the fact that he owns his own flower shop which is really cute and I would love to own my own shop of some kind someday um, and the fact that I really liked that um, it was the drama was really focused on just maybe five or six really core characters in this tiny little circle, um, it just shows that you don't need like a ton of people in your life to have really meaningful relationships, and that um, you know you can create a really valuable and rich community of just a couple people if you're introvert introverted like me, um, and you can get by and you can have a great story and lots of love and everything. So. Anyways, um, those are 
the ones that I highlighted as watched, but I know I've seen other ones. I just don't remember the names because they're in Japanese and I'm not the best at it. Um, but this is already really, really long. I don't know how I'm going to be able to edit this. Um, I really, really hope that you guys will be able to see this because I spent 30 minutes talking about this crap. Um, so I hope this fulfills your challenge for me, Kat. And um, a challenge will be coming your way. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye.